This was always a Louisville team with promise. Promise of a top 10 national ranking. Promise of an ACC title. And promise of a return trip to the Final Four. First year head coach David Padgett has done his best to deliver. But the national recognition has yet to come. The Cards look to do more convincing tonight against Wake Forest. It's a Saturday night in the ACC on the banks of the Ohio River. On the ACC Network, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons on the road to take on the Louisville Cardinals KFC Yum Center, the site of our game this evening. Let's check on those updated standings. Upset Saturday in the ACC. That includes a win for Virginia at Duke. NC State wins at North Carolina, and Florida State gets an overtime win. So all kinds of things happening in those standings in the ACC. It is so great to have you with us for our game this evening. Tom Wormy along with the All-American from Duke. It's Mike Jaminski. Mike, specifically about this Louisville team. This is a team that has played very well in the ACC. You just saw they're in second place. They are 12-1 and on their home court, yet they are not ranked, but one of the better teams in the country. Yeah, really not getting any kind of love at all. I think it's still maybe a hangover from the Patino factor. They were top 25, top 10 preseason. But the Army's the same, but the general changed. And I think <laughs> Dave Padgett's done a terrific job quality road wins in the conference if they continue to play this way they'll be back in the top 25. yeah that takes us right to our innovative play mike as we break it down the innovative play is brought to you by progressive insurance your first round draft pick for car insurance well this team still hangs its hat on defense and they're very quick to the basketball and what they do once they get the steal they get out in the open floor and turn those steals into points Sometimes they can get all the way to the basket. Quinn Snyder pulling up for a three right here. And then always quick, active hands. They block shots. They steal the ball. And then they finish at the rim. Yeah, that game against Boston College right there was one of the home wins for this Louisville team. They're 3-0 in conference play. You see what they have done in the five victories in conference. And that includes the 21 points in the win against Notre Dame. And the issue is for Wake Forest, they had 21 turnovers that equaled 34 points in their most recent loss against Duke. All right, it's the Demon Deeks. When they last met, the Deeks pulled the upset. Keyshawn Woods, an ACC career high, 20 points in the victory. Will he be in the starting lineup tonight? That answer when we come back to Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky, the only meeting between these two programs this season for Wake Forest. Brandon Childress will get his first career start. The sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, in the lineup for Mitchell Wibbikin, out with a sprained left ankle. And Quentin Snyder running the show for the Louisville Cardinals, over 13 points per game, and he had a team-high 18 points in their most recent game, a loss at Miami on Wednesday, 78-75. The Cards lost that one in overtime. And, you know, Tom, we touched at the open about how Louisville creates points out of their defense. I would expect a lot of pressure on this depleted Wake Forest backcourt early on, see if they can get into their legs. Yeah, Wilbekin, one of the better three-point threats for Wake Forest. This is Brian Crawford, their leading scorer, number 13 in the old gold. Durrell Moore did not miss a shot. And their loss at home against Duke, and he hits his first one tonight. Well, he had a stretch where he made 16 in a row That's, earlier yes. this year. So when he gets hot, he gets hot. Uh, a nice early start for him. Just deceptively long defensive team for Louisville. King comes back with the basket for the Cards. Yeah, they, and they need him to get going if they really want to make a push throughout this season. Uh, under double figures, five to seven ACC games. It just is not going to see in the big basket. They, they need better point production out of him. Moore had 18 points in that loss against Duke. Thompson fires away. It rattles out. Malik Williams, who has started the last eight games, they bring Anas Mahmoud off the bench for Louisville. Spalding off the mark. Well, when we talked to the Dave Padgett, that came right after the Kentucky thrashing and it was right before the start of the ACC season and uh, Mahmoud was sick and didn't practice before that pit game so uh, and he said that um, that uh, Malik Williams had been really practicing well so he felt comfortable putting in the starting lineup. Demon 
Stephen Deeks trying to snap a six-game losing streak. The last win was January 3rd, and that's Childress. Yeah, you know, it's going to be key, I think, for both of those two, to and Crawford, to stay out of foul trouble, get off to a quick start. Uh, I would expect both of them to play 30-plus minutes. This is Snyder for three. Over the top and out of bounds, and off of Wake Forest. Danny Manning, fourth year as the head coach of the Deeks. In fact, Danny Manning was on the Kansas staff early in his coaching career, and Coach Padgett, along, down the way for Louisville, was a player at Kansas before transferring to Louisville. Yeah, played one year at Kansas. A nice run out that time, as is usually something that uh, Louisville is, protects against. But the, the more that Wake Forest can get those type of points, it'll be a real benefit. Deflected out of bounds, off of Louisville. Wake Forest basketball. Now time for our Carolina Ford. Keys to the game with Mike Jaminski. Well, if you look at it, and uh, you know, for Wake Forest, they've got to get on the offensive glass. You are playing against shot blockers. And for the Cardinals, they've got to value the ball. They've been doing a better job in the ACC competition of taking care of the turnovers. Wake has jumped out to an 8-2 lead. They are 8-12 on the season. Quick passing. Open jumper. The rim not soft enough for the jump shot by Williams. This is Crawford. Trying to dish it in tight quarters to Thompson who couldn't handle it. Snyder, the one-man fast break behind the back. Score the basket for Quinton Snyder. Yeah, you know, Crawford almost would have been better putting the ball up on the rim that time. It was a tough pass. Uh, these guys are very active and doesn't take them long to get the ball up the floor. Here you see this is a possession took about four and a half seconds and well that was uh, some move around Childress. And here's the early pressure. The points over turnovers that we documented at the top of the broadcast. Out of bounds and back to the Cardinals. And that's, uh, at least in that situation, we, we talk all the time about live ball turnovers versus dead ball turnovers. That one a dead ball, at least you get, you're able to get back and set up your defense. And, uh, some switching zone here. Tough shot from Dang. Crawford brings it up. Thompson. More the follow. Darrell Moore on an early rim bender. And see, you know, he's a rim protector in his own right, but you've got shot blockers. This is one of the best shot blocking teams in the league in Louisville. You're going to have opportunities on penetration to get to the front of the rim. Louisville's second best in the nation. They block almost seven and a half shots per game. This is Snyder. High degree of difficulty. Yeah, I thought, you know, I did their first game, Dave Padgett's first game, and I thought that Quinn's like this whole team, you know, he was trying to get used to them. They were trying to get used to him. And I really think since ACC competition started, they've, they've really gelled. Poked away by Dagadell. Here comes Mahmoud off of that bench for Spalding. Well, and the other thing, you know, what, um, what Malik Williams gives them as a starter is protection. Because when Spalding and Mahmoud are in, if they get into foul trouble together, it's a problem. And that's been a problem for Louisville. So, you know, Malik Williams, a little bit of insurance policy. Mahmoud is the top shot blocker in the ACC. 3.6 per game. Turnaround for Moore. And he misses. So he made his last 11. To count his effort against Duke where he made all nine of his field goals. By the way, he's up to 56 dunks on the season two with that follow jam a couple of minutes ago, Mike. Yeah, which accounts for the 73% field goals <laughs> you know, percentage. It helps to have just had Adele mid-range at the elbow. I'll tell you what, he, he's been a constant throughout the year. Uh, Ding Adele has been terrific. I think he's playing like a first-team all-ACC player at the halfway point. He leads the cards in scoring. 15.7 points per game. Tapped around. Saar tried to grab it for Wake. 
Gets it back to Keyshawn Woods, who tees up a three. Well, it looks like that knee is feeling pretty well, and they'll probably try to get as much out of him early as they can, but normally on a long shot, you can tell how somebody's legs are, and he looked in great rhythm that time. You know, Woods did not play in the home game against Duke in that loss on Tuesday. He's been battling that for about two weeks. Um, you know, he's been in and out of the lineup. He hasn't been that effective, but a good positive start on that shot. Crawford wants to get into the box score and does. Okay, what? Well, it's not a lot of teams come in here and shoot seven of eleven right out of the gate, and this is a terrific start for the Demon Deacons. Adele just beyond the free throw line. It's too strong into Woods. Told you that Woods had 20 points in the win last year when the teams met in Winston-Salem on March 1st. An 88-81 win for Wake Forest at home. Get the switch here, see if Woods can take advantage of it. Childress out of the corner. Trying to find Crawford. It was deflected by the Cardinals. So when we come back, Wake Forest will have the basketball. Keyshawn Woods off of the bench. Stepping back behind the line and knocking down the three for the Demon Deeks in front. Wake Forest has the lead on the road at Louisville. You get a glimpse at their snapshot for the season. 1-7 in ACC play. That was a win against Syracuse at home, 73-67. They have struggled on the road in the ACC. For David Padgett, very commendable job, Mike, on the bench as the interim head coach of the Cards. And, and he remember back that it happened like six weeks before the start of the season. So, um, you know, he had to just becoming head coach very quickly. That was Childress on the drive for the basket for the Deeks who are shooting close to 64% of the first half. Louisville, one of the better teams defending field goal percentage against the opposition. Third in the ACC. Trying to stop a 7-0 run by Wake. Shot clock is down to five. Snyder the recognition and the three! Uh, it's, you know, it's a thing, I'm sure it's frustrating for Danny Manning, and here's the pressure in the main basket, but, you know, that was a terrific 29 seconds of defense, and then Snyder just kills you at the end of it. Out of bounds, Cardinal basketball. After that three, Mike, Snyder now with seven points. And his 32nd made three. A sizzling 67% for Danny Manning's club. A six-point lead, but that you know that last possession looked like it was going nowhere, and uh, he he just bailed him out with a great offensive play. Snyder, the senior from right here in Louisville, Kentucky, from Ballard High School. A lot of pressure on homegrown kids to stay here and perform well. Adele got turned around going down the lane. I think Keyshawn Woods get called for a hold. Crawford for the hold. Yeah, they're going to give it to Crawford, Mike, his first. Our officials tonight, Bert Smith, Earl Walton, Lamont Simpson, presiding over the festivities this evening from KFC Yum Center. What a facility it is. Eighth season that the Cards have called at home, but Woods stepping in the passing lane of the inbounds. Did a nice job fighting through that screen and just cutting off the pass. Crawford, catch and shoot. Like Donovan Mitchell, yes, Mike. Yep. Yeah, there, you know, there are some offensive rebounds that you can go after and some you have to lay off. And uh, that's just a, kind of a needless foul that time. King comes out of the game. He does have one field goal on two attempts as he leaves the court. Denny Crumcourt. Amazing that they catch it only the third coach in 47 years here at Louisville. Adele. Mahmoud! Well, I see Adele makes that play because all the attention really on him and everybody just left Mahmoud wide open. That's what, that's what great scorers do for you. They free up other people. 
We go inside of 12 minutes in the first half. The entry to Saar with the position. Adele. Perry. Three ball. And he's played sparingly, so an uh, interesting substitution for him. Not a great shooter early on in his freshman year. Just the eighth three of the season for Darius Perry, the freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia, out of bounds off of the miss, and it's Louisville ball. So the cards charging back against the Deeks and trailing by three. Wake Forest is led by as many as nine, Mike. Six different players have scored. Yeah, a solid start, though, for Wake Forest. You got their arm mark more climbing all over the offensive glass, and the three-point shooting is factored into this as well. And then the surprise a starter tonight, Brandon Childress, starting for uh, Mitchell Wilbekin, showing he can uh, do a number of things on the floor. And it's... Um, you know, I'm curious to see how they handle the rotation, especially in the backcourt. And uh, they're, you know, right now they're giving Crawford a rest, but I don't think there will ever be a time where both Crawford and Childress will be off the floor together. Snyder is also taking a rest for Louisville as Adele drives and misses. So Ryan McMahon, number 30, has committed the game for the Cardinals. He takes, he takes a lot of pressure off of Snyder. People think of him as a standstill jump shooter, but he can make plays. This is Spalding. Woods was back defending, and it's going to be Woods on the foul. Well, we see any number, there's a number of them in the league, but uh, he amongst them, and especially when you're a good defender like that, a power forward, that you can bring the ball out of the backcourt on the dribble. Replaces number one, Woods. Crawford comes back in for Woods. Woods leaves with that three-pointer to his credit, his only shot attempt. Spalding, Mahmoud, trying to get around more. Deflects back to Perry. Tough catch for Spalding, with 10 to shoot. Adele, Mahmoud going old school with the runner. Spalding's tip wouldn't fall, and Moore pulled it in. Yeah, point blank. And uh, you know, I, I, I thought that uh, Spalding uh, had the better matchup in there against R. Despite the loss against Duke Wake Forest, out rebounded the Blue Devils. Mahmoud went up to meet Moore at the rim. Perry the bounce pass, Adele the finish. Yeah, I think, I think Grau Moore would have been better served to get, maybe just throw a little hook shot up. you got two great shot blockers going against one another there. He had the angle, but he tried to do too much with it. Seven on the shot clock for Crawford. Mitchell had it deflected by Spalding, and it's going to be a shot clock violation. What a defensive sweet sequence for the Cardinals and David Padgett. Well, that's just great rotation coming out. And here's Mahmoud. He talks about his shot blocking ability. This starts to break down the other end of the floor. And uh, Adele just uh, so opportunistic in that situation. But on that last play, Ray Spalding made an incredible run out to get the block the jump shot. Spalding, another Louisville product. As a junior in this lineup for the Cardinals. Adele. Saar went high to get it. Demon Deeks have not tasted victory since January 3rd. And they won at home against the Syracuse Orange. Their only conference win. Shot clock again inside of 10. 
Sar spots up. That was for two. Adele the clearance. Up ahead, Mahmoud. The catch. And the bounce and roll. I don't know, first, how he caught it. Second of all, how he finished it. You know, I didn't think he was going to go up with the shot. Louisville has the lead, 2019, on the play by Mahmoud. Boy, I think they got two bigs out there that can really run the floor. It was deflected. Terry, Wake, Wake's got to be careful, Tom. They're getting caught up in the pace of Louisville right now. And uh, how about that over-the-shoulder catch? And I, you know, I didn't even think he knew where the basket was. <laughs> Maybe Bobby Petrino's yeah. looking for a tight end come football season. Put on a couple pounds, yeah, it'd be yeah. a business. <laughs> a couple of hundred pounds. <laughs> Honest Mahmoud, the senior seven-footer. 215 pounds from Cairo, Egypt. Did play a year of prep ball in the United States in Orlando. Perry went up for it. A couple of players got tangled up. Might be Eggleston on the foul for Wake Forest, and it is. It's amazing to me, Tom, how hard it is for some teams to get the ball in underneath out of bounds. And uh, that was just a long pass, just begging to be intercepted. National Player of the Year in college basketball in 1988. Danny Manning, a national championship at Kansas. A part of the College Basketball Hall of Fame. Tallest head coaching matchup How about here that, right? in the conference. Almost 14 feet of coach going up and down those sidelines. Between Padgett and Manning. Spalding, aggressive to the rack. Yeah, I see. I think that's the matchup that they need to try to exploit right now because Sar can't stay with him inside or outside, and Sar gets picked up for the foul. The Cardinals are on a 9-0 run, and they've got possession of the basketball as they go against Wake. You are watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com. And on the official ACC mobile app, the 35th year of Raycom Sports broadcasting ACC games. Troubles with the turnovers against the Blue Devils resulted in 34 points. They've turned it over six times in this first half, Mike. That number, not good, not a good trend. However, uh, Louisville's only turned it into four points. Not a very good conversion rate for them, so that's got to pick up. Cardinals shooting 48% from the floor, two of five from three-point range. Mahmoud, another acrobatic catch and finish. You know, I, I really like the move of him coming off the bench. Um, it, it, it saves him some early foul trouble. It doesn't look like he minds coming off the bench, and he's, and he's gotten into rhythm pretty quickly. And that's, again, it's McMahon's ability to make a play that time coming off the screen. Six points now for Mahmoud, who started the first 12 games of the season, has given way to Malik Williams in that starting lineup, but it's been chemistry that has worked for the Cardinals. Saar tried to put it up, stairs to Moore, and he couldn't handle it. Well, I, I love the idea of attacking a press to try to score, but when you've got your two bigs or the guys that are running it, it's tough, and, and uh, Saar just made a bad decision on that lob. Cards trying to build on that 16 to run, and they will. Uh, Dave Padgett pointed out to us that uh, Ryan McMahon finally healthy for the first time in a long time, coming back from that rib injury. It's now a 14 0 run. This is Saar challenging Mahmoud, scored in a foul. That was, uh, it looked like he wrong footed that layup too, Tom. It was kind of odd, and I think it caught Mahmoud a little. Uh, yeah, he's saying it was a double dribble. Yeah, that was a double dribble, and he, he, he went off his right foot for a right handed layup. That is the first foul committed in the game by the Cardinals. Stops the run momentarily. Louisville has not lost in conference at home, 3-0. All five of their losses this season have come against ranked opponents. 
Mahmoud had it tipped away by Saar, got it back from Spalding, and that is a double dribble. Yeah, good hustle inside, and uh, I think it was more of a travel than a double dribble, but still a turnover nonetheless. The, uh, the, the best part of this run is a good portion of it is been with Snyder on the bench in a little bit of a rest. Snyder is the leading scorer in the game with seven points for Louisville. In fact, he leads everybody. Shot clock is inside of 10 as we approach six minutes in the first half. Woods. Spalding came out to block it. Woods beats the clock. And it did tick the rim, but that's the oh, second that's the jump shot that Spalding has blocked in this game. Got one down in the right corner, and this one out front. And both of them were at the end of the shot clock. Uh, just, you don't see that much, and that's just how rangy he is to come out of that zone. Mahmoud comes out with six points, three of six from the floor. And Jordan Wara. The freshman from Buffalo, New York, wearing number 33 in red and white, comes into the game for the Cardinals. Spalding ran into Moore and Saar, and the foul against Wake Forest is on Darrell Moore. Yeah, you gotta if, when he gets the ball out front, you've got to sit on his right hand, make him go left. He's been going to the strong right every single time, and either finishing or getting fouled. Our coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. So proud to have you with us. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Well, that's a, one thing. That's a nice long rest for Snyder, and then he's going to get another one in about a minute 45 after the next media timeout. So they'll have him nice and fresh for the second half. This is Crawford in stride. He lets Spalding fly on by. There was contact, and Crawford's going to the free throw line. It is the first personal foul on Ray Spalding, just the second on the team. And now you've got a 90% free throw shooter, Mike. 86 of 95 from the strike for Crawford. There you go, Tom. <laughs> nice defense. Are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he can't hear me from 50 feet away as he makes the second. He's on the Bob Cousy watch list. One of the many collegiate awards given out. And uh, now he gets the assignment also of guarding Snyder too, so he's going to have to work hard at both ends of the floor. Spalding, King, let's nice collaborate for two. All right, Spalding just doing everything right now. They're, they're trying to hit it on the right side. They got it to him, that was a beautiful bounce pass. Wake expending a lot of energy trying to break this press and pressure. Well, at a lot of clock, and what it's meant to do is now it's, it's 18 seconds before they've even gotten into their offense. Crawford slashes. Moore follows with a dunk. Yeah, and that's, uh, Doral Moore has to keep that in his head, that these guys up front are going to go after shots. So they're going to be those opportunities for me. Moore had 18 points in that loss against Duke on Tuesday. I guess that's not a bad front line either. That's a front line that got taken down by Virginia today, Mike. Yeah, it's, uh, and you can see me. You can see the little hand signal, very subtle right there. And there was... There were a lot of people around B.J. King. That was not an easy pass. Crawford, nifty dribbling. Ran into King. So he's going back to the line. And that's, you know, he's, he's not afraid to, to take that contact. Good strong body. You know, you talked about the you know the, the high free throw percentage. And you know, you look at you look at Wake this year. Their one win 
And against Syracuse, they went to the line 24 times. All their other losses, 15 free throw attempts or fewer. Number 22, Dang and Dell replaces number two, Darius. Dell coming back in. Perry comes out for Louisville. Wake as a team, 74%, fifth in the conference from the free throw line. But that number dips down in ACC play, Mike. Just to further your point, they're just 66% yeah. yeah. the from attempts, the line in ACC play. The attempts down, the percentage down. Exactly. And if, the, if, if you look at the overall scoring, they're almost being outscored, uh, doubled up at the free throw line, 75 points. But Dell wants three. Give it to him. He's such a tough cover. He, you know, he's he's a good enough three-point shooter. You have to honor it. It sets up the drive. He moves without the ball extremely well. Adele from Melbourne, Australia, born in the Sudan. He played a year at Victory Rock Prep in Florida before coming to Louisville. King filling the lane. Big strides into the paint. Timeout, Danny Manning. A seven-point lead at home at KFC Yum Center for the Cardinals. 33-26, the advantage for the Louisville Cardinals. 3.39 to go in our first half. Time to take a look at the nation's top 25, brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. It does not include this Louisville team, Mike, nor does it include Kentucky out of the top 25 for the first time since 2014. Yeah, I was going to say, with almost as, not quite as rare as Duke and North Carolina losing on their home court in the same day today. Last time that happened, 1973. Amazing. Virginia had lost 17 in a row at Duke. They last beat the Cavs in 1995, and that ball's going right to the big man of the post, Mike Jaminski. And it's up. You got to be more aggressive. Going, you got to come to the pass, Mike. No, I, I, mean, I, I didn't play in college, I've, but I've taken my, I've taken enough <laughs> shots. At least my teammates have told me I've taken enough <laughs> shots, and they're still telling you. Yeah. Crawford with the basketball for Wake Forest, knocked away. King, the drop off, and the dunk. Jordan Wara. Donovan Mitchell trying to buy a call that time, but uh, you. You really can't be lazy with your passes against this Louisville team. Even short ones, they're just always looking to shoot the gap and get a hand in a deflection like that. Picked up by the Deeks and Crawford. At one point, as that one is stripped away by Snyder, King comes back to get it. At one point, Wake led by nine points. You know, it was amazing. That the crowd was really flat Tom, during that time, but it was the defense that got him fired up. Knocked away at the rim. Despite the miss, it's a 7 0 run right now for the Cardinals. Turn around for Mitchell. King was defending. He got bailed out, too, and that was going to be a tough shot against a guy who's not involved in the offense a lot. So Donovan Mitchell, the sophomore from Clovis, California. Stepping to the free throw line, just his ninth attempt of the season. Now seven of nine. Malik Williams coming back into the starting lineup. Coming up on the Hardy's halftime report, highlights and analysis from the G-Man scores around the ACC. Well, it is, uh, we know that there's one happy place in the triangle over in Raleigh. And uh, Tom, the result, they're tied with North Carolina in the standings. North Carolina's dropped two in a row. NC State has beaten Duke, North Carolina. Arizona. They also beat Arizona and Clemson as a ranked team. Yep. Kevin Keats has done a masterful job. Just over the rim for Spalding. Whistle and bucket. Well, we talked about Quinton Sider a lot, but uh, that pick and roll on that side, really nice spacing. They flooded the left side of the floor. It was just those two there helped a little late getting. It's 
So Spaulding now two for three from the line as he completes the old school three point play. Childress on the run. Sean D. Brown. It will not fall, but he earns free throws. That's going to be on Malik Williams. It is the first on Williams. Brown is another guy with not a whole lot of experience at the line, Mike. This will be his 19th attempt from the free throw line this season. Yeah, and I, I got you got to think that he's going to get better at that. I mean, he's got, like I said, he's a very powerfully built young man. And uh, he can use that strength to get inside and draw fouls. Brown averages over seven points per game. Had 16 in the loss against Duke on Tuesday, where he went seven of 14 from the floor. Sean D. Brown, the freshman from Orlando, Florida. We're inside of two minutes in the first half. Tom Wormy, Mike Jaminski, our outstanding production crew. That's got a little too much mustard on it from Williams. That's uh, surprising me that he, he's got a lot of latitude to take threes, uh, especially for your power forward. Doesn't have a great percentage. It's a long rebound to Childress. Crawford, not bashful. Three ball, Brian Crawford. And a timeout, Louisville. It's, um, you know, the guy I want to keep an eye on in the second half of Wake Forest is Brandon Childress. We, uh, we saw him have a donut uh, against Virginia Tech in the first half and then a career-high 17 points second half. Got off to a quick start, but, uh, you know, just a little slow, not involved much in the offense uh, since that time. Brandon Childress coming off a career-high 18 points in that loss against Duke on Tuesday. 16 of those 18 points, Mike, to your point in the second half yep. for the sophomore Childress. And he's a tends to be a, looks like a second half player. 7 of 14 and three made three pointers. His father Randolph is on the staff for Danny Manning. In fact, they are the highest scoring father son duo in the history of the ACC. And uh, right now, uh, <laughs> now Randolph is saying that uh, Brandon needs He's to kick it up a little bit. I got to, I've done all the heavy lifting to this point. Randolph scored over 2,600 points, and he's got most of that equation. That's an offensive foul against the Cardinals and Wara. Wara is uh, you know, pushing off that time, trying to go baseline. Nice job cutting off the baseline. You'll see, yeah, that uh, good call by the official. That left wing, uh, left arm getting out there. So Mike Wake trying to weather this storm and get it into the locker room. Right now trailing by just seven, 50 seconds to go in the half. A lot of dribbling from Childress. Tough catch for Moore. Oh, he had it knocked away by Williams. He never saw him coming. No way. Williams had it teed up from the side. You know, this is the thing. I mean, you have to be a little careful. There's 42 seconds left here, Tom. But Wake has been in games. The, the problem is it's been finishing games. And uh, so second half, that's uh, going to be point of emphasis. But uh, that, that was a terrific play from the weak side by Williams. Wake Forest knows how to take the lead, Mike. Yeah, just they just need to learn how to hold the lead. That's really the most important part, the holding. <laughs> So we'll see if they can come through in the second half, although... I understand that. Yes. Oh, I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville looks very strong, though, in this first half, but a competitive first 20 minutes. Cardinals keyed by a 16-2 run yep. over the course of this first half of play from KFC Yum Center. Crawford needs to be careful over there as it goes out of bounds off of Spaulding. to see the, the dividends with Spalding, the ability to play out on the floor against the guards. He thought he had a pick right there. Moore was calling for it. Thompson misses. Run down in the corner by Williams. And now the shot clock is off. 23 on the game clock. See if they run that high pick and roll, which has worked so well for him. Louisville has not lost this season with the halftime lead. They are 8 and 0. Final seconds for Adele. 
Malik Williams, that's for three. That'll end the half. Score the half time, the local 42. 42, 33. David Padgett and the guards have the lead on the ACC Network. CC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Gatorade, win from within. By your Carolina Ford dealers. And by Bojangles, it's bow time. Cards are 11 and 1 this season when they possess the halftime lead. That is the situation as they lead Wake Forest. 42-33, led by as many as 12 in that first half. The Demon Deeks had a nine-point lead at the 13:57 mark. Couldn't make it stand up as we get ready for the second 20 minutes. Tom Wormy, Mike Janitsky, our outstanding ACC Network production crew. Topic, I'm be curious to see if, that, if Louisville really applies a lot of pressure up the floor in the first four or five minutes of this second half, right at the start, try to build a little bit of a cushion. That's really when they made the jump and made their lead when they were active defensively. And it helps, you know, helps, it helps when you're efficient offensively, the ball goes through the basket, allows you to get into that pressure. Snyder led the way in the first half with those nine points, did connect on a three, and 14 minutes of action for Snyder. Four of ten from beyond the arc as a team in that first half for Louisville. KFC Young Center, Louisville, Kentucky. Denny Crum Court, head coach here from 1971 to 2001 and a couple of national titles, Mike, 1980 and 1986. In the first game we did here, we had, uh, we had actually had Daryl Griffith on the broadcast from the 1980 team and uh, Milt Wagner from the 86 team. It was actually Coach K's first Final Four down in Dallas. Get back, bro, get back, bro. Virginia going to Cameron Indoor Stadium and getting a road win today to stay perfect against Coach K's team. King opens the scoring in the second half for the Cardinals. Uh, right now, I mean, it seems like the only way that you can undo Virginia is if you run into an incredibly hot shooting three-point uh, three shooting team. I mean, they're just so good at keeping you from getting to the rim, any kind of penetration, anything inside. Mike Duke had gone 16 straight games with 80 points or more. Not today against Virginia. You know, I, yeah, I think people will say, yeah, maybe up in Charlottesville, but to go into Cameron and do that, very, very impressive. Williams able to save it. Capable hands of Quentin Snyder. Louisville, an NCAA tournament team last year. One of nine out of the ACC. That's a Dell for three. What? I think they found some, something in this rotation up front. of They could just keep people healthy. I think they'll be back in it again. The runner from Sean D. Brown. The steal by Crawford. And that's a quick five spot for Wake. And that's, and that's just Crawford switching immediately from offense to defense. He turned his head around and uh, made a terrific defensive play. Crawford the double digits with 11. Williams flying in and dunking on the other end. And Grau Moore, they're, they're trying to pull him away from the rim, make him work out in space. Crawford now to double digits for the 20th time this season. Brown on the drive, slashing. Uh, you know, Sean D. Brown, he's, he's, had some, he's had some big games. Talk about that game at Duke. <laughs> Snyder for three for Louisville. He's got 12 points. Crawford was fouled on the three-point attempt. Spalding came out to meet him. I, you know, he's he's hot. He wants to test it. I, I thought he got bailed out on a, on a bad shot right there, and that's uh, not a play that Spalding is normally going to make. We've seen him block jump shots, but look at that. He just, he just rises up, and, you know, you just got to 
you know, you probably being surprised like that, you're not going to be able to get around that and make a block. That was the 100th free throw attempt of the season for Brian Crawford. Mahmoud Sar, a lot of international flavor in our game this evening as well. Spalding comes out. He committed the foul to put Crawford at the free throw line for three free throws. That's what he does, Mike. Get him double digits, right? Yeah. And Woods back in the game. Again, we'll see how that knee reacts. He did have that one early three, but nothing after that. And Crawford over 1,200 career points, over 400 career assists. It's up to 145 career threes for Brian Crawford. Shot clock is at five. Adele, it appeared that he was cut off, but he recovered nicely, Mike, a little fall away baseline. Yeah, he just created some space on that jump shot, and uh, the one thing, you know, with Crawford on him, he's got some length that he can play over the top. Crawford is the leading scorer in our game with 14. Childress trying to bail out Woods, glancing off the front of the rim. This is Woods leaning in and missing. Moore got it on the tip. He's over Mahmoud for two to Ralph Moore. Well, we touched on our keys to the game about offensive rebounding, and that's one area where uh, Wake Forest is dominated. It's their 12th second chance point. Ten points now for Moore. Ball ends up back with Adele. Wastes no time on the shot clock. Weak side rebound, Woods. Trying to go up ahead and connect with Crawford. Able to save it under the basket. Very rapid pace of play. Saar scraping the Raptors. See, I think, you know, that time that uh, Woods had Malik Williams on him, I think if he, if he was healthy, he would have taken him. Snyder held that finish for just an extra second. It's a two-point basket for Quentin Snyder. 14 points for Snyder, the leading scorer for the Cardinals. Back inside KFC Yum Center. Louisville leading Wake. That score might change, though, Mike. A review on the shot by Quentin Snyder. Yeah, you can see yeah, that right foot is towed inward, and it makes it an easier call, Tom, when the shoe is a contrast to the line. You can you know, make the distinction there, but that was clearly a three-point basket. Scoreboard right now does not reflect that, Mike, because they did take a look at it. They still have Snyder on the main scoreboard with 14 points. So it's remaining as a two is the word that we are getting. And there was a review. The officials were over at the I table thought, looking at it, Mike. Yeah, we saw the same thing they did. I, I thought it was a three. What do you think of that, Mike Jaminski, as Adele is hanging on that rim? Uh, I think it's sloppy uh, transition defense by Wake Forest, and uh, Doral Moore is hobbling right now. He's kind of looking over the bench. I don't know if he, if he can really go. He's up on basically one foot. Appears to be favoring that right leg a little bit, Mike. Woods, shaking off King, rattles out, right to Snyder. Yeah, they've got Jeff at Mathias, Mathias over there, way trying to get him in the ball game for more. This is Childress. Mahmoud, too long. No look. King from Adele. See that? I mean, right now, I mean, Louisville's playing four on five, especially running up the floor because Moore can barely get over half court. Saar against Mahmoud. That's Moore. It's an easy two, but again, he's laboring, running back up the court. Yeah, he, he never basically made it over three quarter court on that last possession. That's why he was there. Adele takes it right to him. Ball goes out of bounds and will stay at this end of the court. 
Time on the floor. Sang Adele from Quentin Snyder. Adele the jam at 14 points. 60-47 the lead for Louisville. 13-52 to go in the second half. Sang Adele coming to play tonight, Mike, as he often does. Well, the junior really, he's got a great skill set. He's a good enough three-point shooter. You have to honor it. He can put the ball on the floor. He's got a terrific mid-range game. He's had three double-doubles in the last five games. And uh, 14 points, four rebounds, four assists tonight to go along with the steal. There was a chance, Mike, he was not going to be in a Louisville uniform this year as he entered the NBA draft, decided to come back. Two-time All-Academic performer in the ACC as his teammate Mahmoud misses. Out of bounds off of Wake. There's Dwayne Sutton on the baseline who very alertly just watched that ball bounce out of bounds to maintain possession and a new shot clock. in a congested area, recovered by Sutton. Straight away, Perry for three. Long three early in the clock, and then now this is a uh, turnover in the backcourt. Unforced error that time, but it's the referee's letting him play, and all right, I think he dribbles off the back of his foot. Yeah, just right off of Olivier Saar's foot. Adele had it blocked by Saar. Sutton. Going to score that basket. Sunday Okeke on the goaltend. McMahon picks up the foul for Louisville. It's only the second foul with the teams combined in the second half. Childress leaves. He's got four points at his first career start tonight. In place of Mitchell Wilbekin, unavailable because of an ankle sprain in practice on Thursday. That's a push off by Woods as McMahon went flying. Yeah, you can you can just see with uh, with Keyshawn Woods that the, 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 just the explosiveness isn't there, and then McMahon just being a little pesky out there picked him up at three quarter court, and it was a good call. Now Woods was injured earlier this season in the game at home against Syracuse. In fact, that was the last victory for Wake Forest, but hurt his knee in that game. Did not play against Boston College in the subsequent game. A down little step back. Skillful play, can't connect on the shot. That's deflected out of bounds. Wake Forest awarded the basketball. Woods again trying to fight off McMahon. That was Sean D. Brown coming out of the corner and he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it was a great pump fake, but uh, just didn't have any court awareness. Sixty-two forty-seven, twelve twenty-four, and counting in the second half. Wake now with twelve turnovers in this game. Mahmoud, strong move and a soft touch. G-Man style for two. Yeah, well, I was just using his quickness. I mean, he can't bang with uh, Jared Mathias on, you know, down low. Saar, wow. open space to get to the Sar. rim. Little double clutch. Wow. <laughs> he made some impressive plays. Dwayne Sutton was spinning. Foul on the play against Wake. It's on Olivier Saar. Timeout on the court in Louisville, Kentucky. Back to the action here.
in Louisville, Kentucky on the ACC Network and Raycom Sports. We're so glad that you have joined us on a very eventful Saturday in the Atlantic Coast Conference. We do have one more game coming tomorrow. Clemson is at Georgia Tech. Wins by NC State on the road at North Carolina, Virginia at Duke. And then Florida State in overtime. So now those two teams have split the season series. I'll tell you what, it's going to be an awesome tournament, Mike, when we get to the Barclays Center for the second straight year. No, no question about it. It's going to be flat, and it's uh, good to see Moore back out on the floor. Looks like he's moving a little bit better. KK taking uh, some minutes for him to get 10 to 2. Louisville leads and points in the paint, 34-22. Wake was able to hang with Duke on Tuesday. Both teams had 34 points in the paint, so they did well against the likes of Bagley and Carter from the Blue Devils. Moore, and he just didn't do enough of it. They got, him, they got a good switch inside, and he just didn't take advantage of it. He had Sutton down low and just couldn't score. Second foul on Doral Moore. Puts Dwayne Sutton. At the free throw line. A couple of blocks in the game for Mahmoud. Top shot blocker in the conference. And Sutton, a redshirt sophomore and a local product from Louisville, Kentucky. A transfer from UNC Asheville as Childress comes back into the game for Wake Forest. He's a guy who's known more for his uh, defense than scoring. Can defend at multiple positions. Sutton has seen action in every game, though, this year for the Cardinals. Wicked crossover from Brown. He challenged Mahmoud. High marks for Shondi Brown on that drive, Mike. Yeah, I, I told you about the strong body and being able to go in and score. And then the answer down the other end from Lance, only his third day three game on the year. There's the crossover. What a terrific move in the body and the finish. Ten points for Sean D. Brown. And it's like, it was like, uh, that was Darius Perry who yeah. hit, that, hit that three. Yep. And uh, right now, you know, Dave Padgett trying to throw a knockout punch. Really putting on the pressure all the way up the floor. Just the seventh all-time meeting between the programs. Wake Forest won it last year in Winston-Salem, but the two previous meetings were won by Louisville. This is just the second time they've met here in Louisville, Kentucky. And the previous meeting here was January of 2016. A win for the Cardinals. Now another one. Same spot on the floor for Perry. Three out of four from three-point real estate for Perry. Childress dribbles to daylight. Mahmoud. Yeah, Louisville's been able to keep Brandon Childress under control in this game. A couple of early field goals, but nothing since. McMahon going for style points. King put on the brakes. Over Woods. Well points now for King, watch out. The steal, the three. I don't know if Danny Manning wanted a timeout before that steal was taken. But he had a couple of words to say with the referees. But this is just explosive. It was that same spot on the floor. Perry knocking the shot down. 
And then on the steal, this is what you have to watch out for, any kind of pass with a lot of air underneath it. Fifteen Deacon turnovers, 21 Louisville points off of those miscues. And now B.J. King, Mike, with 15 points, leads all scorers as he rocked that three ball to the bottom of the net. And he had been in the last stretch in the ACC, only 4-16 from three, and that's why I thought, you know, maybe this is a game that gets him ignited, gives him some confidence. And you can just see, uh, the, again, it's the effects of pressure over 40 minutes. So, you know, it may not show up in the first half, but uh, here we are just uh, past the 10-minute mark, and uh, this Wake Forest team looks a little worn out right now. Yeah, King only had four points on Wednesday in the loss at Miami. 78-75 and OT for the Cardinals. McMahon in disbelief. And they're <laughs> basically doing all, they've done all this without uh, without Adele on the floor and without Quentin Snyder on the floor. Approaching the nine-minute threshold. Tiltus. King the steal. Two on one. McMahon the layup. Inside of that 17-2 run, a 13-0 run right now for the Louisville Cardinals. Woods, he's got three. Yeah, and showing a lot of heart. I mean, it looks like he's playing on, on one and a half legs out there. Louisville led by nine at halftime. They have expanded on that lead. Well, it's been it's it's been the three-point shooting that's really caused the that in the open floor. Another dunk for Moore. Childress tight defending, overzealous, and the foul. Cardinals big in the second half, and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. Eighty-three fifty-six. You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. The 35th year of Raycom Sports broadcasting ACC games. Mike and I honored to be a part of it. And it all leads up to the tournament in Brooklyn, New York. Here's the game summary, Mike. 67% in the second half on the floor for Louisville. Well, we, we touched on the points off turnovers. And, you know, it's... Louisville just keeep putting the pressure on, pressure on. All of a sudden, you start playing faster and faster. You're taking more chances with the basketball, and that's when they're at their most effective. I mean, it's not like they're. It's not like they've only done it to Wake Forest this year. They've done it to any number of teams, and that's sort of the one thing that Dave Padgett has carried over. That pressure defense is uh, in this program's DNA. So Padgett was on the staff of Rick Pitino for three seasons prior to taking over. As Mike mentioned, he is just the third coach in 46 years. Come Pitino, Padgett. Three national titles mixed in for the Cardinals. Why, well, you know, just to throw my two cents in, uh, he's, he's, he's an interim coach now. I, you know, they finished the season out like this. I think he's done enough to you know, take the interim out and get a contract. 32 years old, the third youngest head coach in Power Five. 
08 graduate of Louisville, three-year starter, two-time All-Big East performer when Louisville was a member of that conference. This is the fourth year for the Cards in the ACC. They're the most recent addition. Now, Padgett, in his days, as Mahmoud is at the free throw line, 61% from the floor, Mike. Second best in school history for David Padgett as a player in a Louisville uniform. You know, I, I always marvel and wonder why there aren't more bigs. We've got two of them right here um, that are head coaches. I mean, it's usually guards, usually point guards. Great offensive move at that time by Brian Crawford. He's been terrific all game long. But, you know, Patrick Ewing at Georgetown, and that's, that, that's probably about the three that come to mind. And a little surprising that Patrick Ewing never got a shot at a uh, you know, head coaching job in the NBA, but goes back to his alma mater. McMahon! Yeah, he's showing that he is not just more than a stand behind the three-point line and shoot. And uh, now we got, we got just a good job refereeing right there. Crawford getting a little frustrated with the play. Sutton a little frustrated, and they shake it out. And that looked, uh, how about Ryan McMahon? Nice bounce pass. The bigs have really been sharing the ball nicely. Seven points now, Mike, for McMahon. You talked about him missing the first seven games of the season with a rib injury. He's been a significant addition. David Padgett says so. A steadying force. A guy who come in for Clinton Snyder. Smart player who distributes and scores. Mahmoud was off the mark. Sutton took it right at Mitchell and Moore. And see, those are those are the plays that lead to you know letting games get away. And that's not awake initially. A good job defensively, but just couldn't come up with the 50-50 ball that time, and it led to a, a possible three-point, you know, a play. It's exactly what Danny Manning told us in the shoot-around today. It's just a, it's a lot of little things, Mike. It's nothing big. It's nothing technical, fundamental. It's just that little extra edge and desire. And they have struggled in ACC play. Wake is going to drop to 1-8 and eight in the ACC. And 0-5 in the conference away from Winston-Salem. Well, it's been talked about, but I, you know, that, that this summer, I think it, the coaching staff thought they were going to have Mittaglou and Collins back. Now, this team with those guys back is pretty good. But it's not a, you know, it's not a what-if conference. There's John Collins in the NBA now with Atlanta. That one's run down by Woods, knocked away by Perry, three on one, style points, Sutton missed, Shondi Brown, Perry hustling back, and Mahmoud fouled Brown. It's like watching two hockey goaltenders, you got Moore down the one and it comes up with the save and Mahmoud gets the foul down here. So Sean D. Brown to the free throw line. This was a nine point halftime lead for Louisville. The cards have had their way in the second half in front of their home crowd. We told you at the top of the broadcast, 12 and one at home, soon to be 13 and one. And now Louisville will be 4-0 in conference play, Mike, here on this floor. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I talk a lot about a guy making a jump from his freshman year to his, to his sophomore year. And uh, I think Shawnee Brown may be one of those guys. I mean, he may double his scoring average from this year, get up into the mid-teens, maybe a little bit higher. I think he's got a chance to do that. Now, Shawnee Brown made six three-pointers in a loss at Boston College in 20 points. There was a foul on the play. You know, has Louisville convinced the pollsters now, Mike, to break into the top 25? I don't know. I will say this, though. Next Wednesday, they travel to Virginia. Should they win that game? Yes. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely... 100% you know. they're in the top 25. You would think beating Virginia, which 
right now stands at number two. And, and went on the road and won at Duke number four today, Mike. And, and Clemson losing Grantham, you, you figure that hold on that top 25 spot, you know, spot is a little tenuous. They're going to learn to play without their best player. So next Wednesday, Louisville is at Virginia. And coming up for Wake Forest, they will host Florida State on Wednesday. That is on the ACC Network. Crawford with a three. Closing in on five minutes to go in regulation. Brown misses. Warren. The drop off. Well, this, is, this, this accomplishes two things for Dave Padgett. One, you know, you get the win. More importantly, your main guys get rest. And, and at any time during the season, that's like gold. And then in, your secondary guys get a lot of minutes on the floor, which you never know was going to come down to help. Quick passing. Three from the corner. Sutton has three. Coach Manning wants a timeout. Fourteen points for Sutton. Ninety-five. Sixty-five. At KFC Yum Center on the East. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico. Saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Line, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. And by your local Chevy dealers. The Cardinals had been on a four game winning streak prior to the loss on Wednesday at Miami in overtime. Going to get the victory tonight and improve to 6 and 2 in conference play, Mike. Right behind Virginia. And they could have very easily won that game down in Miami. Or not easily, Absolutely. but it was the, it was in their control. They went just 16 of 25 from the free throw line. That game featured 14 lead changes. Not in the second half, though, for, for Louisville. I mean, they, they were 4 for 10 from 3 in the first half. And 7 of 12 in the second half. That combined with the pressure defense is a lot to overcome. Moon had it knocked away by Crawford, out of bounds, and to Louisville. <laughs> Off the inbounds, Mahmoud hits the deck. It was a scoring change. Sutton now with 13 points, three-pointer from Wake. Sutton for Louisville, 13 points, and now yeah, the referees were looking at that in the monitor during the break uh, about whether it was a two or a three. Right. They changed the three to a two, and that's Mahmoud, who is down, being attended to by Coach Padgett. Not a lot of people who can look Mahmoud right in the eye, but Padgett's one of them. I'm not used to coaches standing up and looking me in the eye either. <laughs> that was an interesting meeting we had. 5'11", a couple of seven-footers. Patrick might, ha might have you by about a half inch, no, Mike. I don't think there's any doubt yeah. about it. Just a little bit, though. I like the question you asked him, Mike, because you hadn't seen them since their game against George Mason to start the season. You said, what's different from then to now? He said, a lot. Took a big gulp and had a big answer for you. Yep. No, it was, uh, you know, at that point, he, he talked about once assuming the, you know, duties of, he had never written out a practice plan before. Right. You know, as an assistant, you get that from your head coach, all right, this is what we're doing, and let's go out and execute it. Which he was for three years under Coach Patino. And you could just sense there was a lot of unease in the building that first game no we, we, we were here yeah, yeah. nobody yep. knew what to expect remember and and then you know the players and the it was just such an odd situation and again all five of their losses the top 25 teams 
They won at Notre Dame in double overtime. They won at Florida State. Now a couple of players get tangled up. That was Williams who came over. And Sean D. Brown, number 23 on the court. And then Crawford now being helped up. Yeah, there was the first foul, and then uh, coming in after that, yeah, was Crawford Corey could have got hurt because he was off balance. So with Crawford at the line, Louisville also won Mike January 10th at Florida State, which was an incredible comeback, 73-69. They trailed by 13 at half to a team in Florida State that has several quality wins, including today at home against Miami in overtime. Yeah, and that's a team that can really score at home as well to hold them to that number. That's Sean D. Brown with a drive, slicing to the rim. Sean D. Brown is a promising young player for Wake Forest, Mike, the freshman from Orlando, Florida. Uh, no, really no speculation as to how long Mitchell Wilbekin is going to be out. He hurt his ankle in practice this week and is in a walking boot and has a cane. Again, Wake Forest is going to host Florida State. Louisville goes on the road to Virginia. Sutton went for the jam, and that was Crawford trying to get back there. An awkward fall for Sutton near the support of the basket. Well, if they're going to look at that, I say, it look, I, I could see him teeing up and going for the block. And it looked like he tried to make a play on the ball. from behind and it just said you know the, the the referees really try to protect the players that are in the air and good thing to see Sutton up and walking so they're not they're not they're not calling there's there's no flagrant foul at all that there's a play on the ball is just a, a a basketball play a hard foul right flagrant one would be excessive and or unnecessary when you get to flagrant two you get into more extreme plays but it appears it's just going to be a standard foul on Crawford although the fans who are in the building in disagreement Yeah, and unless it's a uh, unless it's a flagrant foul, then the opposing coach gets to pick who shoots the free throws. So they're going to put Williams at the line. All right, Mike, our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. There's Dwayne Sutton with the career-high 13 points for Louisville. Came in averaging three and a half a game. And uh, it's his first double-figure game of the year. He's a guy who sees the court, though. He's played in every game. And uh, Mr. Crawford, not particularly a fan favorite at this point. Right? Give him credit despite the circumstances of the game playing hard. This is more of the turnaround. You can understand the fans being upset, Mike, in, in standard motion. It looked like there might be more to it. And when we looked at the replay, it was clear that Crawford was making a play, an emphatic swipe at the ball, but making a play at it. Moore gets that one to bounce in. And now a minute and a half to go. So the second half has been all Louisville. Cardinals will improve to six and two in conference play. And 4-0 in conference at home at KSCM Center. Right now, I don't know how many fans out there after the result of that Kentucky game 
would have seen this kind of result uh, coming up on the halfway point of the ACC season for them. Yeah, that game against Kentucky was a loss 90 to 61 where they went three of 25 from three-point distance. And Dave Padgett said it, it wasn't a wake-up call as much as it got us refocused and probably you know, it sounds odd to say this, but couldn't have come at a better time to get them refocused going into the ACC season. Substitutions for both teams. So we told you Louisville's going on the road next Wednesday at Virginia, but four of their next five games will be here at KFC Young Center. That includes home games against Florida State, Syracuse, and Georgia Tech. You know, continue to shoot the three and play defense like this, uh, like the historically bit always has been a very tough building to come into and get a win. This is Wara across the lane. Came back out for Thomas. And then back to Way Forest. Aaron Spivey. So the benches have essentially been emptied now as Eggleston will go to the free throw line with 22.4 seconds left. But Mike, your overall impressions of the effort by Louisville this evening, and it was a nine-point game at halftime. Well, they look, you, you, you don't feel sorry for anybody in this league, and they took advantage of a depleted backcourt for Wake Forest. You know, with, with Al Wilbekin and um, Childress starting for the first time, you know, I, I, I thought Brian Crawford, you know, gave a valiant effort, but there were there were, there were not enough ball handlers out there, and turnovers have been an issue for this team. So you, you put that together, it's the perfect storm. I mean, you, you, this Louisville defense playing as well as it did and um, just took advantage of a weaker opponent. Anthony Billis, number 40, has come in for Wake Forest. Joe Griffin, Pierce is just going to dribble out the clock. Well, and they talked about it. Uh, Dave Padgett and Danny Manning obviously go back a long way. A lot of respect there. 96-77, Louisville wins it over Wake. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Our next telecast on most of these ACC network stations is Wednesday at 8. Some will see Florida State at Wake Forest. Others will get Syracuse at Georgia Tech. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. The cards over the Deeks, 96 to 77.